Welcome to the Data Center Hawk Podcast. Today we're talking about a concept that's revolutionizing the industry, the concept of hyperscale. If you're thinking about like, hey, should I invest time into this industry? Should I spend my, you know, I can do certain things and you might be coming from a technology perspective or whatever, I would just say yes is the answer. You're listening to the Data Center Hawk Podcast, where we demystify the data center market. Data Center Hawk is your online platform for data and commentary on the data center market. Stay tuned and be sure to join the thousands of others who rely on Data Center Hawk to make decisions in the data center space. All right, David, so today we're starting a series specifically focused on the concept of hyperscale. So I'm intentionally using that word not in the way pe people typically use it in the industry, but I want you to talk about a little bit what do people mean when they say hyperscale and why should we care? Yeah, a smaller set of large companies has created a new part, a new, uh, like, sector of the data center industry that we refer to as hyperscale companies, hyperscale growth. Um, and it, it really highlights how these companies have uh, their their infrastructure needs have, have blown up over the last, you know, several years. And so, um, you know, these are companies that traditionally really need to be able to scale their infrastructure at large scales very quickly. So we refer to them as hyperscale companies. Um, and that is, you know, if I look back over the last 10 years, that's probably certainly one of the things that has impacted the data center industry the most. All right. So David, before we jump into the concept of hyperscale, I think it'd be helpful to set the table a little bit and just give kind of a 30 second primer on the data center industry as a whole. And then that'll help us help the listeners understand how hyperscale fits into that yes well we are data center hawk so we track you know data center facilities and we would define a data center as a physical facility that that houses digital infrastructure so you know these are the servers uh, that companies are using to power their websites uh, power all the applications that they use on a daily basis to run their business and it's what our world uses every day to to live. And so uh, that's how the the uh, industry has grown over the last, you know, number of years has been these these physical buildings. And when these hyperscale companies came along with the needs that they had, the current way of designing a data center, the current way of building and scaling infrastructure that the industry was used to did not meet those needs. So data center operators these are some are publicly traded REITs some are privately owned companies really had to go back to the drawing board and think through hey how can we um and in their mindset it all comes about how do we deploy capital wisely so how can we build shape uh design something that will meet these companies needs today but also will allow them to scale up in the future and that has been like a major change within the space. The other change I would say about these hyperscale companies, I'm sure we'll, we might talk about this, and I won't get too far into it, but traditionally these companies would build in like more remote markets, you know, areas that weren't like where you would see a lot of eyeballs, they weren't where like major population centers are. And, and they were doing that because what? Cheap land, cheap power, Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. You got it exactly. I mean, it was and, and, yeah. Some of the concerns that are concerns today around latency just weren't as big a deal. Yeah, there. and so that has changed over time, and there was a major shift to those companies, which are still doing some of that that we just talked about, but they're also found the need to really be close to the users that are utilizing their service uh, for a better experience. All right. So you touched on it a second ago. It's it's really a small subset of companies within the within the industry. Yep. So five to twenty um, that are really they're making a huge capital spend yeah. on the build and the leasing side. Um, so talk a little bit about, you know, what what types of categories those companies are in. You yeah. obviously mentioned a couple of them by name and then how they've, you know, really grown over time. And I yeah. think what, what is interesting is, is everyone can, every single person watching this podcast is a, impacted by this because you're probably watching this on YouTube or Apple podcast. That's right. Uh, which is, you know, going to at some point have a, is a function of a data center. <laughs> so, and, and the growth of those two specific things, uh, you know, YouTube, yep. internet, podcasts, yep. smartphones, is all driving growth here. So talk a little bit about who those companies are. Yeah, so when you talk about hyperscale companies, there's really two categories. One would be large cloud service providers. 
Uh, I mean, you mentioned that we all use these on like a day-to-day basis. Yes, uh, I'm gonna pause you right there. Yeah. So define cloud service provider. Uh, a cloud service provider, you know, would really be, is a company that is providing cloud services to businesses or end users uh, that you know help them either run their businesses or uh, you know do things from a B to C pr- or business to consumer perspective. Um, and and those and those cloud services have like massive needs, you know, and and many of those companies were not did not exist 15 years ago, you know, 20 years ago. And that's that's one of the really interesting things about our space that is unique is that it's such a young industry. But that so those cloud service providers are growing the the market. Certainly. We've actually done a pod on what is the cloud. Uh, so you can check that out. We'll link it below. Uh, yes. but it, I think the way I picture them is like demand aggregators. Yeah, where, sure. You know, they take, you know, you have a platform for businesses to run their IT, their yep. websites, et cetera. So they can all utilize like almost like a shared resource pool. Yeah, to some sure. Extent. That's an oversimplification, but, no, but that's a great go watch the podcast and you can understand why the growth has been. So yeah, explosive. no, that's a great, you know, point is, um, th- I mean, that has changed the data center industry, you know, and, and the, and cloud growth exists in physical data centers. So just, you know, Wait, the cloud is not exactly. Watch so, the podcast. Yes. Um, okay. So then, if I flip and say, "Hey, there's a second category, which would really be SaaS companies, social media companies that have hundreds of millions of users that have a lot of activity that are storing things, that are doing things with videos, streaming pictures, and those needs can you know need to be or those infrastructure requirements scale up very quickly." And that's the challenge that these bigger companies have had, the hyperscale companies have had, is like, hey, how do we, you know, um, effectively serve our customers with where we are today, but then also be ready to take the next 50 to 100 million users? And, you know, that conceptually is like, you think might be an easy problem to solve, but when you think about you have to have the, the servers and the vision and the architecture, you know, on your application systems to handle that, it's... It's quite complicated, um, and so that and so you can bear, you put those two uh, combine those two together with cloud service providers and these SaaS companies, and you have twenty companies that, in my opinion, have really changed the trajectory of this industry and will continue to you know over the next five years. Yeah, I think the term we have heard before is oligopsony. Oh, right. got to get it in there. Get that t- I know spelling I, right I'm, here. This podcast is brought to you by the word oligopsony, and. It's a small, number, way, small have, number of buyers. You have a you have a following of people that listen to yes, your word the choice. Vocab following. Yeah, and I think I'm that here for you guys. I think that I think that will uh, that will be exciting for them. Well, you know, you did. can't go back to the well too often because I've used that word a lot on this podcast. So, but it is it, it, it. We'll talk about this. There's a whole podcast in the future on how these companies have changed. How. Yeah, you're literally from site selection yeah. to development to leasing yes. to the infrastructure that's in the data center. All of these things are impacted by yeah. these twenty companies. Um, so, can we, hold on, can I just go back to yeah. the? I, I do want to say this for if you're listening and you're trying to understand the the data center space and data center industry, everybody comes at this from a different perspective. I came at it from commercial real estate. And so the data center industry was like an asset class for me, meaning like, hey, there's the office asset class, the, the industrial asset class, the retail, multifamily, and data centers. And and I would just tell you that the exciting thing about this space is it is so young. Like, and the changes that we've seen are incredible from a growth standpoint uh, and really don't have rivals as it relates to how we've seen some of these other commercial real estate industry classes grow. Um, and so if you're, if you're thinking about like, Hey, should I invest time into this industry? Should I spend my, you know, I can do certain things and you might be coming from a technology perspective or whatever. I would just say, yes, is the answer. I mean, I was lucky enough to get into this space and I am so thankful that I did because it has provided so many incredible opportunities. Um, and you know, it's not with companies, like I said, that have been here, been around for 50 or 60 years. I mean, the companies that are growing this space are ones that, you know, like 15 or 20 years old. Some are four years old, which is mind boggling when you think about, but I think it just shows the excitement and the opportunities within this industry. So my PSA is over. Thank you. Yes. Okay. So lastly, for this intro podcast, you know, these companies, as you might imagine with the amount of money they're spending have 
you know, changed how the industry functions, you know, mm -hmm. fundamentally. Mm -hmm. So talk a little bit about when, if people are listening to this, have an understanding of, of, of co-location and what it is. And again, we have a whole series on that data center fundamentals. Gosh, we have done a lot. Know, we have really done a lot. Um, <laughs> what on earth? You know, talk about how the concept of hyperscale, and I keep saying it like that, but so we really want to talk about both the com customers and the companies who are servicing them. So, so there are companies who would probably call themselves a hyperscale data center company. I don't know if they'd use that specific phrase, but they're certainly focused on those specific customer sets and, and building and designing data centers that meet those specific needs. Sure. So talk a little bit about how those, how those companies have really changed the industry, both from the real estate side, from the technology side, from the leasing side. Yeah. So I think if I just think about impacts on the space, you know, there are certainly data center operators that have chosen to fully focus on this segment of the market. And in order to do that, you need a lot of money, <laughs> you need a lot of land, uh, and you need a lot of locations. You know, typically you need to be able to house these requirements in multiple markets. So because of that, uh, that so that's one of the impacts is it's from a data center operator perspective, you know, they have uh, gone out and raised more money. They've purchased more, you know, land uh, in certain markets. Uh, they've changed their design to better accommodate uh, these bigger requirements that take place. Because there is a key difference between an enterprise, you know, yesterday or this week we did a, uh, a, a panel on with Data Center Dynamics where we talked about the evolving enterprise user. And there's a very different requirement set for a, a bank that has, you know, one megawatt uh, requirement versus a, a cloud service provider that has a 36 megawatt requirement, you know, and, and how you would go about um, winning that customer, et cetera, from a provider perspective is just a different approach. You'd put that one megawatt deal in a different uh, physical location than you might put a 36 megawatt deal, et cetera. So, um, so that's, that's the way it's changed impact the space on a provider perspective. I think on the, on the, the user side, you know, they have really leveraged their position to, um, achieve some really creative and incredible data center campuses in different markets. Um, and I think it's, it's spurred a lot of international growth. That's another way it's impacted the market. So we can hopefully talk about that when we do the full podcast, but certainly it's had an impact internationally. Um, and it's had an impact on pricing and returns and, you know, that as well. And, and so I think when you, when there are opportunities this big, a lot of people want to pay attention to them and have an opportunity to serve those requirements. And, uh, and so those that that changes the way people approach the market. So, you know, all those things are ways that the hyperscale hi, that hyperscale hyperscale growth has impacted our industry. And I don't see that changing anytime soon. I mean, the the impacts that will you know continue in these markets are uh, the the maturity that a market needs geography needs to serve these markets. That That is another thing that I'd say, like in the future, just look for like you you have to have the power the the fiber the water infrastructure to serve these requirements because they're so large and that will push a lot of these cities that don't uh potentially to think of creative ways to get that infrastructure in place to, to serve those requirements so that's it's more of a list of things but it's certainly had an impact on the space yeah so clearly it's been it's been these guys are the the kind of the elephant in the room or the the whale at the poker table yeah. if you were so that that everybody's focused on that yes um and not everybody's gonna win i mean that's another thing that is yeah. a challenge in the space right now is you have a, a number of data center operators that are going after these requirements but there's not you know let's be clear i mean there's not dozens of really large hyperscale requirements that are you know just filling a list they're they're you know smaller because a smaller number of them because they are so large um that being said you know don't uh, i think there's still a lot of growth in this sector you know and, and, it, and it's interesting how it's like playing out in the u.s playing out in europe playing out in asia i mean those are those are interesting things to talk about but i think that that's part of it is it's a very competitive market and i would say this the people that are leading the you know the data center operator community i mean very smart individuals that are you know uh, have gotten very thoughtful in how to put 
deals together that that serve these companies well. Ten years ago, our industry didn't do that well. It was like, hey, we're going to build this, and you need either take it or not. Hmm. That's very different now. It's a very different approach, more collaborative. These are very smart customers, you know, and so well, when you show up with one hundred and fifty million bucks, you know, you you can kind of dictate your terms a little sure, bit. Sure, you bet. So it's anyway. I think it's a it's a fascinating part of the space. And you know what I keep coming back to over and over again is an interview you did with Tag Greeson uh, from QTS a couple of years ago. He is the chief hyperscale officer. So going uh, for, for QTS, yes, for QTS, which kind of underscores the fact of like, yes, companies are highly focused on this yeah. this specific segment. But he said, you know, he really defined hyperscale as two things or three things. They want the ability to scale, like you mentioned, um, speed to market, and then cost. Those are yeah. the three things that are going to drive them. And then he really said there's two categories. There's companies that will lease... 10, 20, 30, 40, up to maybe 75 megawatts yep. at a time. Yep. Um, and just to put that number in context, so if you think about, you know, in the Northern Virginia market, you know, even just a couple of years ago, it was right around 1,000 or 1,200 megawatts. So if you think about a 50 megawatt lease out of 1,200, so that's, you know, three, four, five percent of the market in one transaction. Um, so it's easy to see why these companies get so much attention when these transactions are so large. And then the other group was companies that are going to go one, two, three, four megawatts at a time. But over the period of, a, of several years, they'll become a 20, 30 megawatt yeah. customer. And yeah. so those, those are the two kind of types from a size standpoint yep. of, of what he would still consider hyperscale cus, uh, customers or companies. Yeah, and I, that's the area that's, I think, intriguing for me. It, you know, it was intriguing for a lot of people that are in the space, but is when do those companies make the shift from going from the, the smaller you know, requirements to somewhat of the bigger requirements. Cause that makes a major, uh, that has a major impact on the space. When you are bringing forth a, a facility to handle some of that demand, you know, one of the, one of the challenges is how do we forecast when one of these opportunities could take down our whole supply that we're bringing to the market, you know, and that, that's one of like a, it's a, it's a great problem and it's a, awful problem to have, you know, which is, hey, we are building a pipeline to go into the, you know, with opportunities and one opportunity takes everything. And so all these other groups that we're working with, we can't help for a period of time. Um, and so that's the game that everybody's playing is, hey, how do we manage our capital appropriately with the demand that we're seeing um, and the supply that we're bringing online? All right, Dave. Well, thanks again for great thoughts on, you know, really hyperscale, a good primer yeah. for, you know, why this concept is so important. Yeah. Um, if you all want more information, you can go check out datacenterhawk.com. We've got um, I think blogs we've written over the years that are you know, focused on different facets of the hyperscale industry. And obviously you can go search where those facilities are on our site.